Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am filming in my house. You can see my temperate greenhouse behind me. There's a window there. We're not actually in the greenhouse, but it's really cool to be able to have a look outside. I love watching, like, just observing my, my plants out there while I'm like, at the dinner table, which is in front of us. So yeah, that's my temperate lean-to greenhouse that was new this summer. We just did a tour on that. And today we are in the house, because when we are outside in that um, greenhouse, I'm like, we looked in the window and we're like, hey, there's my plants on the table growing inside. So I thought, why not give a little Nepenthes tour of the stuff that I'm just growing super simple on my windowsill. Before we do that, I want to give a shout out to the San Diego Carnivorous Plant Society. I never did officially thank them, although I thank them privately for the shirt they sent me. Um, I love it. I wear it all the time. And yeah, it's an awesome shirt. So thank you guys for this. I do wear it. And yeah, I really appreciate it. But what we're going to do now is we're going to switch to, um, instead of filming me, we're going to look at the table and I'm going to go through some of my um, Nepenthes that are growing in the, on the windowsill with like the only thing extra is a little bit of heat pad. So let's have a look. Okay, so it is middle of November and yeah, they have no extra light here. The humidifier I turned on, I, I don't turn on it much in the winter because our winters are so humid. I usually use it in the summertime, but I thought I'd just show you what it's like. So this runs in the summertime like this all the time, but like I say, the winter, it's, it's about 55% humidity in the house. And being it's always like 100% humidity outside this time of year, we try to limit how much humidity we're putting in the house. But um, plants are doing pretty well. The awesome thing about this is it's on a south-facing window. It's a bit of a cloudy day today, but um, gets lots of sunshine, lots of direct afternoon sunshine, especially this time of year because the sun is lower in the sky and it just sort of like comes straight in. And then in the summertime, as the sun gets higher in the sky, it actually doesn't hit the plants as much, believe it or not, because it's higher and the angle of it makes it some come down and it falls short. It's so like the sun's so low right now in the sky, when it comes in, it comes in almost sideways because we're kind of on the side of a mountain, so I'm lucky there. But yeah, I wanted to go through some stuff, do a bical update for you. We um, we had an issue with the bical. I'm not going to lie to you. I just uh, have been avoiding telling you. So it's back to being good again, healthy again. A few remnants of the old accident here. So back in February, February 18th to be exact from the tag, I repotted this guy. And bicals are super, super sensitive to being repotted. I've, they're like one of my most sensitive Nepenthes I've ever seen for, for being repotted. And anyways, I repotted it, fresh media. I'm like, there we go. It's good for two or three years. And it was really happy. Like it had so many leaves on it. It was just gorgeous. But anyways, um, a couple days later, I noticed it starting to wilt. And it got wiltier and wiltier. And every day I looked at it, I went, it'll, it'll perk up that day. And then all of a sudden I realized like after a week, I'm like, it's not going to perk up. So I like found this huge clear bag and I bagged it up and got all the humidity. This was in the house here, right? It was in February. So it was cold and dark and yeah, it was just, I, I didn't um, repot it any different than I did any other plant. But that's when I realized how sensitive bical carotas are to the roots being disturbed. I've imported so many bicals and they are definitely the most sensitive plant until they get established. And I've, I've noticed this too, the bigger the Nepenthes, the, the more sensitive it is to root disruption. So we have our first little pathetic picture back on it since February. I basically lost all its, its leaves, its, its newest growth, which was like this, like barely lived. And um, yeah, so I think this was the new growth at the time. And it was going to be a huge leaf and then it just like stopped dead in its tracks and became a tiny little leaf. Um, and I cut off all the black leaves and it's looking okay again. It's got four or five new leaves on it since then. It took months to recover though, like to even get growing again. But anyways, it's still on the windowsill. The only thing I do for this guy is there's a big heat pad under. That's not big. It's like a 20 by 20 inch now. I have it under two trays. I don't have it under the third tray at the moment. But yeah. So that is my bical, and it's happy in producing new tendrils all the time now, but these are the first ones. It just kept producing stuff like this because it was like hurt so deep into the, um, the plant itself that like no tendrils were forming for like that many months. 
Um, again, you kind of get a look. It's just really hazy. Like if you look up here, you can see how cloudy it actually is maybe. So, but you can also see how bright this is even when it's cloudy. So it's really bright. And um, I think that's why I don't even need extra lights or anything. Some other stuff here. This is a red bical. I moved it in. And it did have pictures in the summertime. And I think it's going to start forming one here, but it doesn't have any pictures right now. Growing on the windowsill compared to the greenhouse, pictures are hit and miss. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. Um, my Renoir Tiana that I drew from C is looking awesome right now. It's got amazing colors on it. And some of them have eye spots in the middle and some of them don't. Um, there's one hidden down there that does. But yeah, this one looks amazing. It's like an orange and with yellow and nice contrasting bright lime green leaves on it. Really nice. I did some transplanting today, which is why this is like fresh in my, my head. I, I grow some of my seedlings in here, believe it or not. And I have transplanted a bunch today and I took out the bigger seedlings and put them in the greenhouse and then just put the babies back here. So this is kind of my, like my nursery area too for some seedlings. Um, some Vichii seedlings down there and what else do we got? So many different things. What did I repot today? I repotted some Alba Marginatas. So Villardii, I have tried this in so many spots. It just plain old hates me. I This thing I cannot get growing. It pitchers well in the house, but it doesn't grow necessarily. It takes so long to get growing again. Like, So I've got it in peat moss and perlite and a bit of sand in a huge container. This was hanging in the greenhouse, which is why it's got this. Um, I put all my seedlings in there and I just don't want to ever touch them again. So that's why they're, they're just all in one thing. And yeah, it's pitching nicely, but I don't see any leaf jumps. If anything, the leaves are still getting kind of smaller, which sucks. On the other hand, my previlii, which are also cursed, um, are doing well in the house, like really, really, really well. So these are very vigorous previlii to start with. And I, let's see, how did this story go? Okay, this guy here, the bigger one, which has a few pictures on it, little pictures, but still pictures. Um, I think I brought in the house first and you can see some nice size leaf jumps on it. It's getting bigger now, finally. And then last fall, last winter, my two previlii that were, oh, that's right. So I transplanted this guy and brought him in the house because he was sulking where he was. So I changed out the media, changed out his location. I wanted to experiment with him and I brought him in the house. So he's sitting on a heat pad sunniest spot I can possibly get for him. And it's pretty bright right now, right? Even though the sun's just peeking through the clouds. And anyway, so he was my tiny one, even though he's bigger now. And then brought him in the house. He started doing okay. These guys were my big ones. And you can see how they're all still tattered up a bit down on the lower leaves. I had a visitor in the greenhouse. I'm assuming it was a little mouse and it took my nice, healthy Previlli eyes that looked as good as this guy does now, and they chewed them down, both of them, right to the core of like the growth tip. There was nothing left. There was just bite marks through all the leaves and no growth tip on either one, and it took these things months to recover, but they're actually doing really, really, really good as well in here now. So, little tiny pictures on them. I have to be careful. This one is in a pot that is um, just in a ceramic pot. It doesn't have a drain hole in it. So I water it very cautiously because I don't want it sitting in water. And then the other one has a drain hole out at the bottom so it would drain into the tray. But yeah, Previlliis are doing better for me on my windowsill than they, they did in the, the greenhouse. But I was like so upset when, this thing, when these guys got eaten. And anyways, yeah, so there's two mishaps for you. What else am I growing here? This is my Gracilis Black. It's getting nice dark leaves to it and some, some redder pictures on it. Um, very different than a standard Gracilis, which is like a lime green. And this is my seed grown Marilliana that's in here. I think we're still really zoomed in. The other thing about these ones is they actually get more neglected than my greenhouse ones. They, they never get their pictures trimmed or anything like that. Um, just repotted these guys today, Northania, a few Mirabilis, a few more Mirabilis, uh, 
Tobacia, Tobacia, however you from Mount Toba. Some nice pictures on it. A red one and like a really red one. Two different plants in the same pot. You guys are gonna love this. Here's my North Ania. Can we see this picture? I'm getting like humidified in my face for the shot. But anyways, I find North Ania, everybody seems to like have trouble with them or be scared of them. And I find them so easy to grow. So anyways, that just lives in my house. And it pitches well even in the house. I have um, another couple in the greenhouse. And yeah, they do well out in the greenhouse too. I moved it in more of just like a test to see. Because I was having no, no issues with it in the greenhouse. But I'm like, I'm just going to see. So it needs some leaves trimmed and stuff like that. But um, yeah, Northania growing in the house with no issues. And I'm going to leave you with this guy. This beautiful, there's actually two in the pot. I've been growing them in the house in this location for a year or two anyways. They started as small plants and they're really bushy now. And this is my Chinostoma. And it has produced a very, very nice picture in the house. So let's see if we get some good shots of this. It's the first one that's like been like really, really nice. So hopefully it's um, a sign of things to come. I'm just trying to like get my hand back. Here we go. We'll hang it outside the pot. So yeah, look at this. It is way better than the, the previous picture before it. And this is one that um, doesn't picture in the summertime in the house. I think it's just too dry. The sun does come in. My house gets really warm and it stops picturing. So... But yeah, you can see the little, I don't even know what you want to call these, like the little teeth on them that are coming out. Like little spikes that kind of stick straight out. They're um, firm, but definitely not, not hard or anything. And yeah, this is the BE clone. Really nice color coming out on it. Um, and yeah, I was just thrilled. This picture was so much nicer than the previous one. And I can see, I don't know if it's on the same plant or not, but, um, oops, we're like, Zoomed in now so close. Um, I don't know if it's on the same plant or not, but we have another nice one forming here. And this thing has just done amazing in the house. So these are my first two, and I, I've been growing them inside for a long time. And I have another one in the greenhouse, and I think, honestly, it is picturing better on the windowsill than it is in the greenhouse, even though the greenhouse gets way warmer. Um, yeah, so it's doing amazing in here. Psyched about them. This is one of my favorite Nepenthes, that, Bicals, Velosa, stuff like that. But I have a number of these myself that um, I just love and I'm going to grow out. So, yeah, that is my windowsill update. All my Nepenthes are doing well on the windowsill. The only ones that weren't doing well on the windowsill had nothing to do with the windowsill. So, yeah, my carelessness of repotting. And my little rodent disaster down there in the Pervilii. And everything else is doing pretty good, considering I don't do anything to it at all. I, like, put a jug of water in and make sure there's, like, a half a centimeter of water in the tray. And then it soaks up the water from the bottom. And then when they, they're looking pretty dry, I do the same thing again. So, there we go. Easy to grow Nepenthes on the windowsill as long as you have, I guess, I don't know, a little bit of light. A little bit of luck. A little bit of humidity. I'm not that humid. So my daytime temperatures in the summertime can peak out around 80 in the house. We like it. We like a warm house. And with all these windows, it gets pretty warm. And nighttime lows in the summertime, they're probably well, around 70 because we have the air conditioner that can go. I close the vent that's like right below this table. Then in the wintertime, we're probably lucky if we see 75 in the house at the most. And it goes down to about 70 at nighttime. So there's my temperatures. Like I say, humidity is always constantly around 50, 55 in the house, even though in the summers outside it's like 20%, and in the winters outside it's like 100%. So it always maintains sort of about 50% in here. And I was going to put a light over it this year, just like an LED light. I was going to hang it. But you know what? We're now like into the the fall winter growing season it's mid-november another few months and the days are going to start long getting longer again what is it another five weeks and the days are going to start getting longer again so 
There we go. I don't know if I'm going to put a light here after all. I hope you like this video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.